Hi everybody and welcome back to the Science Museum. When I think of a generator, it's this kind of thing that I'm thinking about, a chunky bit of Victorian engineering you'd love to have in your garage. But it works in exactly the same way that every generator works. This chunky bit of steel here has these massive coils around it. When we put electricity in there, it just creates a magnet and it's north-south. And this is the rotating armature. Of course, it's just a bundle of wire rotating in this magnetic field. We have the commutator there, and we have the brushes to take off the power there, and it's working, just like every other generator you've ever seen. The electric motor and the electric generator, they're like two sides of the same coin. In general, the task of an electric motor is to convert an electrical current into mechanical force. On the other hand, a generator converts mechanical force into electrical current. So as you can see, we can simply rearrange the motor to be a generator. So a motor is arranged like this, and if we pass a current through a circuit, it creates a magnetic field around the wire, which interacts with the field of the permanent magnet, and that makes a rotation in the loop, and it looks like this. In the case of a generator, we can provide the mechanical force with something like a windmill rotor attached to the loop and connect a bulb in place of the battery. Now, when we leave the magnetic field as it is and apply a wind to the rotor, an electrical current is produced. Now, I can't say this often enough, but that is the basic principle. And of course, there's a whole range of different components. So coils can come in all shapes and sizes, Rodin coils, uh, normal coils, Starship coils, serpentine coils. There's just so many of them, but they are in fact just that bit of copper that you're waggling in the magnetic field. The way you input can have a whole range. We can have a windmill like in the example, or we can have this, which is the one that we've done, but there's a whole range of ways of doing that job, and it leads to a huge configuration, but when you're wondering about them, they all work on that basic principle, including this. So quite a lot of the times, what you're making is a choice. Now, I like serpentine coils because I have this belief that they're easier to make and they're easier to use and they perform really well for various reasons. And I've done loads of videos on that, but serpentine coils are my favorite. And so we've got this serpentine coil. Now, I'm also a believer in generation at the edge rather than torque at the axle. What means is that I've got this big disc with the magnets on because the speed of the disc is faster the further away from the edge that you, from the center that you get. And remember, the voltage that's generated depends on the length of the copper passing through the magnetic field, the angle that copper makes with the field, the speed at which it turns, and the strength of the magnetic field. That's it. That's what generates voltage, and those are the things Things you can manipulate and so I choose this particular generator design and I'm sure other people make other choices. Now, because the problem with renewables is they're not always there. I mean, the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. But if you're wanting power, of course, there is something always there and that's you. If you're going to be using you to generate power, what you want is something that really is pretty efficient and can transfer your power into a generator as efficiently as possible and as easily as possible. And believe it or not, this crank mechanism is one of the most efficient methods of doing that. So what we've done with it is we've stuck a generator on it and I've also put the electronics on them. So do check out video 1981 where we go into this a bit more detail, but there's the ends of the coil coming straight into the rectifier right there. And then from the rectifier into the voltage regulator and from the voltage regulator straight out into this USB plug. That's all there is to it. And there's a USB connector coming out of the voltage regulator. And I have got my phone right here. <laughs> And there she is charging. <laughs> that was amazingly comfortable because I had to do about 20 minutes to charge a few percent on the phone, but it worked really, really well. Now we had some problems with the sound and that's because we're using at radio mics, lapel radio mics, and the phone interfered with the mic. So I'm sorry about the sound problems. We've gone through a wired mic for this section, but 
All of the STL files are available and they're down in the description in the bottom should you want to print this off. The other videos that are linked at the end of this video describe the electronic section of it, but there we go a phone generator that is hand cranked that you could keep going for absolutely ages and doesn't depend on the wind or the sun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.